Hey folks, Scott here. Just a quick demo video to show you a couple of the cool new features I've added to Layer Stalker 1.5 that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, two of the features we're going to look at today are the Layer Stalker Strength Slider and Selectable Target Space. The Strength Slider does exactly what you expect it would do. It gives us a slider control that lets us animate how weak or how strong the Layer Stalker attraction is uh, over time or, or at any point. And the uh, selectable target space um, is something, for the most part, you don't need to worry about. It's, layer Stalker pretty much handles it in the background, but basically it, it, it lets us determine whether or not the uh, track comes back in layer space, comp space, world space, or the space of the layer's parent. Um, so we'll uh, look today at how uh, I use these new features to get this um, adorable little Cupid bow and arrow animation. Um, in particular, the tricky bit with this is to get that bow string to look like it's sticking to Cupid's trigger finger and both ends of the bow and uh, to the end of the arrow and get that all kind of rigged up in a way that's pleasing and feels natural and physical. So let's look at how we did that. I'm going to switch over to a working version of this comp and uh, basically uh, we won't worry too much about how Cupid's animated. I've got a lot of layers shied out here. Um, but the ones we're going to be interested in are his hand and his bow, and uh, we'll add that bowstring that goes in between. So to create these, um, I basically just got the bow split into two pieces anchored at the middle. They're parented to his hand, and I've got some rotation keyframes on there. Uh, you can see I can just rotate either piece of this. I've keyframed that to get this kind of twitchy, pulled back hard kind of effect and then at this frame where it releases it snaps forward to give kind of a nice release animation. So to rig up Cupid's bowstring I'm going to basically create some targets for our layer stalker um, tracking to, to get hold of. I'm going to create one at the top of Cupid's bow, one at the bottom, and one in the center that will track to Cupid's trigger finger um, that will create that bend in our bowstring. So we'll need a, a few nulls to make this happen. We'll start with, um, let's call it bowstring top target and bowstring bottom target and we'll create one for the Center, bowstring center target. All right, now the bottom and the top, I'll just parent to the bottom and the top of his bow respectively and position them roughly where I want the uh, ends of the bowstring to go. Not quite right to the tip, just sort of on that curvy bit there. And the bowstring center target, I'm not going to worry about for now. Eventually, we'll target that onto Cupid's trigger finger, but right, right now, we're just not going to do anything with that right now. So if I watch his bow flex, we see those two targets moving right along with it. That's just what we want. Cool. Right, so now we need a couple of solid layers to put a beam effect on. That's what we're going to make the string out of. So I'll create a bowstring solid, move it down here under Cupid's hand, and I will put a beam effect on that. I'm going to set my length to 100%. Time 50 is good, and 40, no, what am I talking about? Four and four for the thickness should be fine, no softness, and let's make it white. And that looks good. So now what we want to do, and this is where Layer Stalker comes in, is we want to basically track the start point of this beam onto the bow top target null, 
and the end point onto our center. And then we'll do the same for another beam on the bottom. So I'm going to select this starting point and go to my layer stalker panel here, choose target layer, and I'm going to choose bowstring top target and stalk this layer. And I see that did nothing. Bowstring top target, stalk this layer. There we go. And on my end point, I'm going to select that, choose target layer, and we'll go bowstring center target and stalk this layer. And now we see that if I move the center target around, that end of the beam will stick to that, and the other end sticks to the end of the bow. That's great. This is what we want. We'll call this bowstring top, and I'll duplicate that layer and call it bowstring bottom. And I'm just going to select my start point on this, and instead of it being stocked to the top one, I'm going to choose bowstring bottom target. And now that's on there. Great. Oops. So now if we were to, well, for example, we could just parent that right onto Cupid's hand, and now as he draws his hand back, we'll see the bowstring is beginning to behave how we want it to do. Trick now is when we release Cupid's bow, the string doesn't go anywhere. So we'll deal with that next. So what I need now is a way to um, sometimes have this bowstring center target uh, attracted to Cupid's trigger finger and sometimes attracted to a spot halfway in between the top and the bottom of the bow. Um, luckily one of the things uh, Layer Stalker is really good at now with the addition of the uh, strength slider is positioning something halfway in between two layers. So what we'll do is we'll um, we'll create a, another null that's going to sit in between the top and the bottom of the bow and another null that uh, is always sitting at the end of Cupid's trigger finger and then we can control whether or not the uh, the bowstring center is attracted uh, to one or the other. So to do this we're going to create a couple more nulls. Uh, I will first create a bow center null and I will create a trigger finger null. The bow string center null we will rig up to stick in between the uh, top and bottom of the bow. Trigger finger null we'll just parent that right to Cupid's hand and position it somewhere around the end of his finger. So this bow center null I'm going to parent to the doesn't matter if I parent it to the top or the bottom, I'll parent it to the top and zero out its position so that it snaps right to the top of the bow. And with that position still selected, I'm going to choose target layer in my layer stalker panel and we'll select the bowstring bottom target and now we'll see it jump to the other one. And as we uh, scrub our layer stalker strength from 100 down to 0, we'll see it move in between those two points. We want it in the middle, so we'll set that to 50 and just leave it. And now you'll see that that null is always exactly halfway in between the top and the bottom of the bow. So that's great. That's just where we want that. So now we have a point at the end of Cupid's trigger finger that we can uh, stalk to, and we have a point in the center of the bow that we can stalk to. So we can take our bowstring center null, and it doesn't matter which one we parent it to, we'll parent it to one of those two points and we'll stalk it to the other one. Uh, I'm going to parent it to the trigger finger null, and I'll zero out its position so it snaps to there. And then with that position selected in my layer stalker panel, choose target layer, and I will uh, select the bow center null. And you'll notice now this um, 
is defaulted to parent space. Layer Stalker has again detected that this layer has a parent, and that I want the result to come back in parent space, which is exactly right. Stalk this layer. And now as I uh, scrub my Layer Stalker strength, you'll see the bowstring center will animate from the end of his trigger finger to its neutral center spot. And we will just go ahead and keyframe that, um, the stalker strength. And I'll make that a hold keyframe. So it's always there just until the frame where he releases. And then we'll set it to 100 so that it snaps to the center of the bow. And we'll pull this back and see how that looks as it animates. Looks like it's sticking beautifully to the end of his finger. And then when he releases, snap right back to the center. And with a little motion blur on there, it looks just lovely. Perfect. All right, all that's left now is to add the arrow. And we're just going to repeat this same process, basically. I'll got the arrow layer here. Uh, it's just got a little opacity. Oh, it's already got a layer stalker slider on there. We'll take that. That's from a previous run through. Uh, it's got a little opacity on it. We're just going to imagine that his arrow magically appears every time he needs it. That's fine. And um, for this one, we're going to need a target for it to shoot at. So I'm going to create one more null. We'll call it arrow target. And we'll just put that sort of off screen up here somewhere. And that's what the arrow is going to be attracted to. Um, we will parent the arrow to the trigger finger null and zero out its position. And now we'll see that we'll just wait. <laughs> That's not what we want. You notice now uh, with it parented to the trigger finger null, it's taking on the rotation of that null and uh, doing some weird stuff that we don't that we don't want it to do. So I'm actually going to reverse this, uh, and I will parent this to its target and zero out its position. And zero out its rotation as well. And now with its position selected, we'll stock it to the trigger finger null. And now with that layer stalker strength at 100, it's going to stick to that null. But it won't take on any rotation now because that's a, a layer stalker track, not, uh, not parenting. So it won't take on the rotation. And that's great. But of course, at the moment of release, we need to start keyframing the strength of the layer stalker attraction um, so that it will move over to its target. And as we slide this down to zero, it'll head off towards its target. And at zero, it'll be there. And that probably doesn't need more than a few frames of animation. Boom. That looks about right. So we'll let that cache. He's going to pull his bow string back so we get a nice loop. Ah. Hold on. We want him to grab his bowstring again here. So at this moment, just here, um, we want to get this uh, bowstring center target where we had our keyframes. And we're going to just set this, the stalker strength here, back to 100%. I'm just pasting the keyframe in here. And now, after that frame, that's going to pick that string up and he'll pull that back so that we can continue the loop. There you go, shoot the arrow, knock another one. There's the loop. Everything seems to be hooked up nicely. Happy days. So because Layer Stalker doesn't care uh, how deeply nested our layers are or who's parented to what or really much about anything, um, we can go um, into another comp. This is one where I've just uh, I've taken the arrow out of the, the Cupid loop, and I've brought this comp out into another comp where I have this uh, little target animating around for Cupid to try to hit. 
and I can just uh, create an arrow anchor null that is layer stocked into onto trigger the trigger finger nested down in that comp uh, and that will just stick to the end of Cupid's finger out in this comp and I have this arrow target null that is actually just parented to the target and now my arrow uh, I can just uh, parent to this arrow anchor here that I as I have done and then layer stock it to the target and then um, you can see that as I uh, keyframe between there and there that's gonna make its way to the target whoops just the keyframe please and so you see in here he'll hit that target anytime doesn't matter I can move Cupid he's still gonna hit that target the animation might get a little weird sometime we want to probably put a bit of rotation uh, intelligence on that so that it's always pointed at the target but you get the idea um, that's some of the strength and flexibility of how layer stalker works there you go so there you go there's a couple of the key new features in layer stalker 1.5 uh, hopefully you enjoy have fun